My bag weighs 34.5 pounds. Today I am on the Mount Potash Trail, going into the woods. I have been learning about winter camping. Incrementally, each time out, I add a new element of challenge. New gear, changes in the weather, and this time I'm adding elevation. opening up again. There's our friend Pass Conaway. And it's just amazing now. This must be the lookout. this lookout there's still like half a mile to go. I'm almost there. This is it, end of the line, the summit. It's beautiful. It's been a while since I've gone to any summit. I missed it. Look at the sky, it's so blue. A pretty big panorama, really. Mount Kerrigan catches my eye. And of course, Mount Washington.
Okay, I'm looking around a little for a camp. Honestly, there seems to be a lot of spots, but I'd prefer one that is 200 feet off the trail because I've been reading about the leave no trace principles. But let me also say that I had a long conversation with the forest ranger recently to plan for this trip. And he said the 200 feet off the trail rule does not apply to every trail in the White Mountains. It is a leave no trace principle, but that isn't the same as a White Mountain National Forest regulation. However, the leave no trace principles are like considerate of the forest and other hikers. I even practiced several times in my back field. I used my Gaia and my watch to figure out in snow how long it would take me to get 200 feet. Uh, so I took my backpack off because it's really heavy and I figure I might do better with my pole. I also am communicating with husband right now to say, okay, I'll be texting you soon. My gut instinct tells me that people have camped up here before, uh, but there's a little kind of down area. So I, out of sight would be ideal though, anyway. I think I'm going to go back over here for a minute where there was another partial walkway going down. How about here? <laughs> oh, wow. There's some snowshoe hare tracks and possibly a grouse. Didn't see any big animal tracks all day. This is so cool. I was so afraid about this. Oh, look over there. Oh, look over there. Yeah, I worried about this so much. I studied the map so much. That poor ranger asked him so many questions. And I think it's going to be okay. There's one dead tree squeaking. But it's leaning the other way. So I think I'm okay. Next, I will be stomping down a spot and just kind of getting my jacket on, that kind of thing. Some hikers just came and they're over at the summit. The people at the summit have a dog and the dog ran back in here and looked at me and was like, what are you doing here? The dog got really scared and ran back. And the people are just talking away, enjoying their summit experience. I don't think they know I'm here quite yet. The dog was probably running back like, I saw a Sasquatch in the woods. I think the day hikers have gone now. I haven't heard any talking in a while. I tried to be really quiet. I don't know if they saw me or not, but they didn't say hi. I didn't see any people's bodies, you know. So it's hard to say. I know it's that way, but pretty good. I'm really happy with my spot. My Gaia said I walked 207 feet and it took me three minutes. I had a snack. This is like a fancy granola bar, really. Enjoy. But usually I don't buy them because they're expensive. I also used this today, which certainly will freeze and not be usable at night or whatever. But I wanted to encourage myself to drink. I put an electrolyte mix in here and I've been drinking this throughout the day. It's pretty cold now, so I better finish it off. I think my husband is afraid for me because he made me send him my coordinates. The most unusual aspect of this camp so far is that it's an absolute requirement to keep snowshoes on at all times, except in the tent. 
But next, I think I better do the most terrifying thing next on the list, which is the bear bag hang. Took a little walk back to the summit. Wow. I can't see my tent at all. Now the time is 4.10. I'm going to walk back to my camp to get my food and my big camera and come out to the summit to make dinner and watch the sunset. I thought I was being real smart putting in my jacket. Well, it just spilled in my jacket. I smell like macaroni and cheese now. I'm sure a bear would love to come eat me. Oh, come on. Where's my towel? Oh my gosh, it looks terrible. Mm, why did I do that? Luckily, the moisture in mac and cheese did not get to my base layers. This meal is good and everything, but it is a little messy. The sun has dipped behind the western mountains, and there's a little bit of glow. Not sure what will happen. Right now there's no wind. And I might even get in the sleeping bag for a little while because it's not quite time for the stars. I will leave a window or two open for ventilation uh, to try to cut back on you know the frost inside, but it's going to be very cold tonight, so uh, there's probably no way around some ice crystals and it's okay. This evening's audible book is A Life on the Edge, the memoirs of Jim Whitaker, an American mountaineer, the first American to get to the summit of Everest. It's a great book. I'm really loving it. And I'm just going to lay back and be warm in a sleeping bag, listen to this book for maybe an hour, and then get up and see if I can see any stars. Well, it's pretty neat out here. No wind. Very cold. My camera has 20% battery left. The batteries just plummet when it's this cold. The moon doesn't rise for a while, so you can see a lot of stars and the sky is darker than usual. I set up my shot with the red light, and then I turn off the red light. Maggie's Highway is down there, and I can see white lights and red lights sometimes. Just a little bit there, you can see it. Must be coming through 
one of the turns. People down there, and I'm way up here. I kind of know these mountains. That one is Pasa Conway. I've hiked up there and camped up there. Its neighbor is Whiteface. And then I get a little uh, hazy, but I think it's the Sleepers, or Kate Sleeper Trail. And then the Tri-Pyramids, I hiked over there. One side is gold and the other side is pink and blue. It's 2,700 feet. It's on the 52 with a view mountain hiking list. I would love to camp on a lot of smaller mountains, but it's rare to get an opening and outlook like this. Got the bear bag down. There were no crazy sounds last night, no animal sounds, no sounds, no wind. Amazingly quiet. It was so quiet that I kept waking up. <laughs> Probably didn't get far below, uh, like maybe 15, 14, 15 degrees. Inside my tent, I didn't have too much trouble with moisture. There were little ice crystals kind of above where my head was. And then on my sleeping bag, you can see some ice. Looks like drops of water, but it's ice. And that's just from my breath coming out. Stuff. And as for leave no trace, you can obviously tell somebody camped here because all the markings in the snow. But I was careful with all those trees. That one I did not bend. It was like that. And when it snows again, this will all disappear. I packed out every single thing, including my toilet tissue. One of the concerns on this trip is that the jet boil might not work in cold temperatures. And I had to send my uh, winter stove back for like a warranty repair. It was leaking. So it's not starting. <laughs> I might be having cold cereal for breakfast. Warmed up the canister in my pocket and I think it should go. Maybe it's the actual stove that can't work. I don't know, but I'm hungry. Oh my god, I think it worked. Come on, let's just give me some hot water. Woohoo! Good morning. Mm. Oh, this is so wonderful. And a cheers toward Mount Washington. Needless to say, I will not be putting my hot meal inside of my jacket today. I forgot that little warming bag I have. Which is too bad because it's 18 degrees. I feel this camp, this one experience, was a long time in the making. 
and that all those other winter practicing camps I did, like each one learning something, they've all added up to being able to do this and enjoy it. And I'm grateful. This is blueberry peach crisp, but it's kind of like an oatmeal. I mean, it looks delicious. So this is going to be my first bite. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Today's adventure will be downhill snowshoes, which I find a bit of a challenge, but it should be a lot easier than my last attempt because the trail is so well packed. Thank you to the people who gave me downhill snowshoe advice. And the best tip was to put your weight over your toes where those biggest crampon are. I mean, I'm not leaning too far forward. My weight's kind of over my body, over my hips, athletic stance. Uh, but I am emphasizing making sure I dig in. Jakarua out there. I have not been up there at all. And there's lots of places to go over there. And then there, I don't know, is that hedgehog? And then if you keep going, look over there behind the tree is Pasacanaway. back to the parking lot. That was a good camp. 